what does healthy mean to you? What does beauty mean to you? And really work on creating those like rituals and those habits and those those daily boosters that you can do that kind of help create this, um, I guess, this healthy environment for you to really flourish in your own beauty. Hello and welcome to Uncovered, the podcast with your host, Jason Irving. Join me in a journey to understand what's truly happening in your world and the world around you. This is not about how you're living life on the surface. It's about what's truly driving you from under the covers. I'm going to take you on a journey to deeply uncover the reason why you are here. The ultimate purpose in your problems and the way that they have shaped your life up until now. See, I believe you have a purpose and your problems are the highway towards ultimate realization of that journey towards freedom and the reconnection of your true self. I've been told I have a different spin on most things and I'll be giving you my understanding of life, love and what we're all here for, purpose. To get the best out of this podcast, drop what you already know so you can discover what's beyond you. So join me, let's play this game of life and bring on liberation, transformation and change. Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome to Uncovered. Really, really excited. I've got an amazing woman here who has been in our academy for a little while and she's a, an absolute phenomenon when it comes to hair. Uh, welcome, Megan, to the Uncovered podcast. Hi, Jay. Thanks for having me. I'm really like looking forward to talking to you because you have a, a very unique want and a very unique desire to actually bring hairdressing up on another level. So I've had experiences where um, a lot of the academy members have come and um, got their hair done from you. Yes, and they have. Um, there's something really different that happens. Every single one of them, Felia comes, is, um, who works with me and looks after me, and she just um, feels something really, really different. I've, uh, it's care and nurture, and every single time you give them what they ask for. And uh, it's so awesome to actually have you uh, on our podcast. So I'd love to know a little bit of um, background of, of Megan. So where, what made you decide hairdressing is your thing? Where have you, what, what are you about? And tell us, um, tell us a little bit about your background. Um, I think for me, hairdressing was just something that I kind of never really thought was something that I would want to do. Um, I'd always been creative and always been interested in like the beauty industry and fashion and things like that. Um, and when I was younger, I did a lot of um, creative things like dressmaking, um, photography. I've done some makeup as well. Um, and I kind of got to a stage in my life where I was really enjoying being creative and being part of, I guess, the beauty industry, but I didn't really have a clear direction on where I wanted to take it. And I had a friend, actually you, um, suggested that I go and speak to someone that you knew that owned a salon here in Canberra. And I thought I was just going to have a chat about the industry. She thought I was coming in for a job interview. And we kind of convinced each other to just give hairdressing a shot. So um, I started working at a salon and you know, started learning about hair in the industry um, and really immersing myself in what the industry is when you're an apprentice and um, how, you, you know, the learning process that you go through in the qualification process. Um, and I just realized that I fell in love with hair without knowing that hair was the thing that I wanted or needed to be doing. And listen, this is so, so important because I remember when I, when I jumped into um my it job it wasn't something that i fell in love with it wasn't something i even liked right mm. so when you're a creative quite often creatives don't actually make money they don't actually put their finger in the, their pulse they're then they're not really thinking about um what they want to do to get a return on their investment they're just doing something that's actually going to get them um, enjoyment and a lot of the time when it comes down to putting skin in the game financially it's just like it all gets really really difficult and so falling into something that is something that you like I feel really envious because I spent nine years doing something you know I did a three three year degree it took me three and a half years and 
nine years working in a job that I was ended up becoming really, really good at. It wasn't something I loved at all. So tell me about um, falling in love with something that you never knew existed. Well, I think I've always been surrounded by hairdressing. So I think for me, the I guess traditional hairdressing and what a lot of people think is, oh, you just go and you cut hair and you colour hair and you just do hair and that's, you know, you go to work, you come home from work and that's it. But for me, like hair is more than just like a job. It's more than just, you know, do the doing of hair. For me, it's all about, I guess, the connection that I can create with people and the... I guess the way that I can make people feel like hair is such an intimate um, part of a person. It's one of the only things externally that we have that we can chop and change quite frequently. Um, And it's very, (laughs) it's a very (laughs) intimate, um, an intimate process to be allowed to touch someone's hair and I guess look after them and um, care for them. So for me, I kind of fell in love with that aspect of hair rather than the actual physical doing hair. So for me, like hair is great. I love it. It's my passion. It's my part of my purpose. But the bigger thing for me is like the people I meet and the stories I hear and the impacts that I can have on their life. Um, And that gives me more purpose and more, I guess, enjoyment out of life than, you know, the actual doing of the hair part. Yeah, I love that because look, a lot of the time, um, from what I hear, I I'm a bald man pretty much, so hair is not something that my my poor mum has. You know, the hairdressing salon, and um, you know, I just sit there and go, "Oh, she, poor thing, she did. She had sons instead of daughters, <laughs> so you know, it's, it's poor thing. She just didn't get the opportunity to have the right person." come into her life. And I think this is where I think you really stand out, Megan, is that a lot of people go the hairdresser for a, um, for a D&M. They, go, they, go, they don't go just for the hair. They, they're going for a chat and yeah. um, they want to know that the person actually cares because it is like the, the neural pathways, people don't have no idea about what happens with hair there's so many neural pathways that go into the brain so hair are, hair is actually really emotional and mm. this is why we quite often um, can disregard especially as a female it's a, it's far more emotional um, adventure than a man um, yeah. unless you're gay gay men love their hair but heterosexual men don't really care so yeah. it's, it's that it's that process where we've got this emotional want and desire to um be nurtured um, through it. Mm. And what I'm hearing is that you tell me if I'm wrong, the hair part is a, is actually the secondary to um, actually what you, what makes you really tick. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like hair is just hair, hair grows, hair falls out. Hair has its own cycle of life, right? It's ever changing. It's never the same. And there are so many things that can impact the actual physicality of hair on your head. But it's not, it's for me, it's not the, it's not what you need to work on when you come and see a hairdresser. Like hair is not just a chore that you need to do every six to eight weeks. Hair is, or getting your hair done is a time for you to really, I guess, allow yourself to have someone care and nurture you from the inside out so that you're feeling better and you're feeling more lifted and boosted and confident from the inside. Yes, the outside is important. It's the crown you never take off, really. But it's more about what the, like the inner work process of what I do that aids and kind of goes hand in hand with the actual phys- physical part of it as well. So, yes, it, you can look in the mirror and see that, you know, you've had your colour done, you've had a great haircut, you've had a style, whatever it may be. But as that to me is amazing that I can create that on the outside. But if you don't leave my, my chair feeling nurtured and loved and cared for on the inside, then I haven't really done my job. Because oh, my I job description it. is not the outside. The, my job description is the inside and how you feel and present yourself to the world and how we can communicate who you truly are in your heart on the outside in the way that you look and feel and present to the world as well. 
now I know why every single person is so happy after they've had an experience with you, Meek. Like, um, it's so interesting to hear it come out of your mouth. Uh, I, I know this about you. It's great for you to articulate your, your actually real purpose because yeah. we don't, we don't understand, like some people do hairdressing and you see this in the industry, don't you? You see someone going to work, doing the, doing the hair and coming home and it's a job, right? Yeah, 100%. It, it's not a job for you. It's actually something that actually builds um, a really beautiful sense of self-esteem for you, obviously, and also for your clients. Yeah. I think we live in such a, like a tough world in terms of, you know, everything's instantaneous on social media and things these days. And it's so easy to, you know, have a curated lifestyle that's, you know, in the palm of your hand and, you know, real, real life's not like that. Real life's not curated. Real life is not perfect. And real life will, real life, it's not a picture. It's the right, it's right now. It's in the moment. It's being present where you are. And I think the pressure of, on women and I guess in society in general to be picture perfect all the time and to have your shit together and to I guess have everything wrapped up in a little bow like that's what so many people out there are are desiring to have their life look like but that's not reality and that's not ever going to be achievable if you don't first work on I guess how you feel about yourself on the inside yes it's you know, you've got all the comparison and things of, oh, that girl looks perfect. She, you know, she has got the perfect life. She's always on the holidays. She's always got a tan. She's always got her hair and makeup done. And that's great for her, for her picture, but that's not her reality. Her reality is she probably goes and gets it done, you know, every single day, her hair and makeup. She has a personal trainer and she works out twice a day. She has a chef, so she doesn't have to worry but that's not realistic for everyday people. So yeah. I think part of what I want to create and do is help women embrace the imperfections that are perfect for them. They're not imperfections yeah. for in the wrong way. They're imperfections in the beautiful way. Like it makes you unique. It makes you individual. It makes you shine in your own way. And I think we need to really embrace that more than aspiring to look like you know the perfect picture on instagram or whatever oh my god you just sent absolute shivers down my spine meg like the in, the perfect imperfections that are unique to the individual this is such an amazing way of thinking about especially with females like um being when i was a therapist i asked um every woman that i spent time with are you happy with your body mm. And you know how many people said yes? How many thousands of people I work with? How many people said yes, do you think? None. I had about six or seven. Yeah, wow. I, I didn't get to two, two hands. I got to two hands, mm. but I didn't get past two hands. And that's terrible. Um, yeah. You know, um, and what we're talking about here is, you know, hair, body, whole thing. Um, to be able to actually be comfortable with whatever it is that you are. And not, we're not talking about being unhealthy are we meg right so no. the, the, there's an extreme of this where people go um people who are voluminously overweight saying it's okay to have your body the way it is that's doctors have said mm. that's very very unhealthy from a body perspective that's cancer that's cancer inducing we're not yeah. talking about that it's actually being healthy with your imperfections so you can be comfortable with who you are am i am i saying this right or have i just gone all versions are wrong for women yeah no i yeah you know you're on the right track i think it's um i guess it's just being realistic about who like your body and who you are as a person as well so you might be you know a beautiful curvaceous woman um but you might be you know walk working out three times a week and that could just be going for a walk around the block for 20 minutes and that's your idea of you know exercise it could be um you know eating healthily four days a week and having a few splurge days in the week like you've got to find balance in this in in 
in your terms of healthy, like what does healthy mean to you? What does beauty mean to you? And really work on creating those like rituals and those habits and those those daily boosters that you can do that kind of help create this, um, I guess, this healthy environment for you to really flourish in your own beauty. So, yeah, and look, one thing about um, beauty is it is in the eye of the beholder. Right. And so how, how, how do you help like, or how do we help? Like, what do we do with the society today where beauty is quite often the eye of the projection? Mm. It's not actually in the eye of the person holding it on the inside. So how do you help people that are, um, you know, I know people just feel so warm and glowy after seeing you. Um, And I know you probably don't go, hey, I'm here to help you feel beautiful on the inside when you see them. Like Mm. um, they they feel this essence from you, this this connection. Um, Do you verbalize any of this stuff around around what we're talking about right now with your clients? I do. I do try and share, I guess, a little bit about the deeper meaning behind why I do what I do. Um, I think I pick and choose clients sometimes that I feel can handle, um, I guess, the emotional connection aspect of the of what I'm doing. Um, but I try and be an open as transparent as I can with all my clients. And for me, it's not really about me at all when I'm working on my clients. It's about them and what they want to experience and feel and, you know, ha- have as part of their journey when they come and see me. So, for me, it's a lot of um, talking and getting to know my clients. And I don't even think I completely understand how I get out of my clients what I do. I'm still in the process of, I guess, working out, you know, my little processes and things. But it comes down a lot to, I guess, talking to my clients and connecting to them on a deeper level so that I can understand in some kind of way how they tick and what how they work and what they feel um sometimes that just comes about you know a consultation and working out hey you know what's your inspiration for today or where are we going with your hair or your color or whatever it is um and then I just add like the layers and layers of I guess conversation and body language and I guess the feel I'm very uh, I kind of feel into my clients' energies a little bit to kind of see where they're at. If they're not in the best space, I tend to hold back a little bit. Maybe they need a bit more silence. If they're really open and engaging, then, you know, we'll spend the whole time we're chatting, you know, talking about random different things, but, you know, laughing and giggling and having a good time alongside, you know, the actual doing part. Yeah, I love that. It's just, so what I'm hearing from you is that you have to be really prepared um, to be unprepared for your client's needs, right? So your client comes yeah. in and you've got to adapt um, to what they want. So imagine if, you know, someone comes in really, really happy in their, in their first um, time they come to see you and they're really, really not that way in the next time. Mm-hmm. So you need to know how to place yourself in the right position, I'm assuming. Is that correct? Yeah, 100%. It's, it's about making sure their needs are met and being in the right space for them. So I can still be, you know, present in myself and be where I need to be for me and for me to be able to look after my clients. But, you know, if I'm going in there and I'm being extra talkative and extra, you know, happy and bubbly, but they're really not in the right space for that, then they're not going to enjoy their experience and they're not going to get out of me what they need. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that. And I think this is really, really important. I think, a lot of people um, try to put their own needs above their clients um, yeah. in lots of things. You know, I, I, I know this from, you know, people who used to come and see me from therapy or when I'm a leader doing work in the academy, it would always be this, um, they'd see someone else and they'd say, oh, they say, it felt like it was all about them. And mm. what I'm hearing from you, Megan, is that your ability to, gauge where someone is at is actually what makes people um, feel like they want to come back to what you're providing because you're providing something beyond hair service 
And yeah. you're also really damn good at your job in that regard too. So listeners, we're not dismissing the ability that Megan has. It's just understanding that there's more to it than um, going and getting your head on. And I think people need to start thinking a little bit more deeply about what they're doing and why they're doing it. And I think you're, this is why I love you, Meg, because you're an anomaly, right? Mm. You're not thinking um, your, your first port of call is who are you, how are you, and how can I help? Mm. And second is let's figure out how we can make this hair a magical thing. Yeah. Yeah, there will be 100%. Like there will be times where I spend 20 minutes talking to my clients before we even get started. And that's just because where it's obviously needed before you start. Like for me, I don't just sit my clients down and go, oh, are we doing the same thing today? Like that's not what, I mean, there are hairdressers out there that do that and there are hairdressers out there that get people in and out and that's how they do hair and that's fine for them. It works for them. I'm not discrediting those, you know, I guess a lot of the industry because that's how it works, right? Let's be realistic. A lot of people just want to get in and get out. That's fine. But for me, it's like, it's, 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 I don't do it to get paid. Like, yes, I am trying to build a business around this model of hairdressing that I'm trying to create and put out into the world. And yes, I have incredible clients that come and see me that I love seeing that I love connecting with but I don't do it to get paid I do this because it's bigger than me it's bigger than my want to do hair and do something different and creative every day this is about me trying to help as many women feel as beautiful as they can for as long as they can in between visits with me because it doesn't matter if you're there every six weeks or every week or every four months or every six months if I can get you to a stage where, or a state where you're in my chair and you leave, you're going, I can last eight weeks and be confident and beautiful and happy for eight weeks before I need to go back and get a top up and that booster and that self-care and that good feeling vibe from the inside. That's great for me. If it's six weeks, if it's 12 weeks, it doesn't bother me at all how frequently my clients come. As long as when they're coming, they're getting the emotional support and the, I guess, the boost in confidence that they need and that they feel cherished and loved and cared for when they finish seeing me. Yeah, I love that. And I think this is really important, listeners, that quite often, um, you know, you, you, you meet people who are just in, in, in for the buck and there's nothing wrong with that, like people who just mm. want to make, make money out of an industry. I, I, I fully respect you and, and what you do if you're listening to this and you are a hairdresser. Um, it's just a different way. It's just a different format and it's just a different approach. And I think um, because we've spoken about, um, you know, the hairdressing is just a start, isn't it? Like for you as a person, um, you've got bigger, yeah. bigger, bigger things to do and, um, and more, um, and more to do on that, on that phase of um, mm. connecting into that inner beauty. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like for me, you know, I love hairdressing and I love connecting with my clients that way. And I'm enjoying building my business and, you know, my repu- my reputation in that aspect. But for me, it goes beyond just hair into the future. I think, you know, there's so many women of all ages, like from young women to older women that just struggle so much with, I guess, feeling beautiful um, on the inside and just really owning who they are as a person and all, all of the aspects, like no one's perfect and no one will ever be perfect, but just owning that imperfection and being comfortable with that. I think there is so much work that needs to be done in that space. I think a lot of the work at the moment in that space is it's there, it's coming, it's just not hitting the mark properly. It's not creating a sustainable long-term, I guess, inner confidence and inner self-worth, you know, tools and mechanisms to really propel women to have and own more power and more, I guess, trust and confidence in themselves and their beauty and their confidence and perfections. Because, you know, it's, whatever you've got is perfect for you. You know, I have my struggles and when I'm in, you know, my shit, I'm like, oh my God, the world's going to end. But realistically, 
it's just me and my brain fighting with, I guess, my truths and my, my, I guess we label them as imperfections, but they're actually perfect for me and perfect for my journey and perfect to help me grow and change and, you know, move forward and become a better person and hopefully help, you know, all those young girls that, you know, look on TikTok and Snapchat and see what they perceive as perfection, but realistically it's them themselves that are perfect and they don't really need to change. They just need to own who they are. Yeah, I love that. So, I, th- I think yeah. this is so essential, um, guys, is that um, we've got, we've got a, an, a person and that's, that's, that's really, really different. Like in the hairdressing, like you go to, you go to your CIT or which is a Canberra based, um, you know, um, education place or we go we go somewhere to go and get the education to be able to be a hairdresser but they don't really teach any of this stuff do they no no I think um, the education system it's just the technicality aspect of hairdressing so I guess the scientific knowledge that you need behind hairdressing to make sure that your color and haircuts are performing uh, the way you need them to be for the services that your client are after. They don't really go into, I guess, the emotional meaning and I guess the emotional connection that hair can have. Um, and I guess the way that you can change your services to be more emotional ba- emotionally based rather than just physically service-based. Yeah, um, 100%. There's a yeah. lot of aspects of hair that I think need to... I guess, change and grow and adapt to the current, I guess, social scape. Um, it's, a huge, it's a huge job. The industry is still quite backwards in a lot, of, a lot of ways. And I think the biggest indicator of that at the moment is that no one is or minimal people are joining the hairdressing industry. It's a trade that is actually losing people faster than it is gaining people into the industry and i think um why do you think that that is megan why what do you think's happening there i think the draw card to come i guess like the incentive to come into the industry is not there i think people look at hairdressing and they go uh it's a really long hours it's a lot of hard work uh, you're not always appreciated by your boss. In fact, I know a lot of young apprentices that have had terrible experiences with their bosses yeah. um, during their apprenticeship stages. Um, I think the financial um, impact of the industry is turning people off. I, they get minimum wage. Um, you're expected to be on your feet for 40 plus hours a week. You're also expected to continue your education. Hairdressing never stops. You never stop learning. If you stop learning, then I think that it's time for you to leave the industry because the industry is ever changing. Fashion's always changing. We're always trying to keep up with the latest trends and be innovative and creative. So you need to be as a person okay with, you know, ongoing education. That might mean though, um, or has meant, for, I guess for me in the past, you know, training and things on your day off. Um, so there's a lot of sacrifice when it comes to entering into the hairdressing industry and not a lot of reward in terms of, um, I guess, financial reward and I guess appreciation from employers for their staff and the effort that their staff put in. It's not easy being a boss in hairdressing and owning your own hairdressing business and salon. It's hard work. Mm. It's something I'm learning to do and I'm realising how hard it is. But I still think that you you need to be thinking about the long-term goal of hairdressing. Do you want it to fizzle out and die because no one's doing it anymore or do you want it to be an industry that is continually growing and changing and can help you know create change in the world in terms of like perception of beauty and things like that yeah and I think it's just changing the changing the guard I think if we're looking at an industry that um you know it's harder for people to um to stay in because of the finances that's a big one especially right now with everything going up in price um to go and get a job that um can earn more money and it is a hard um job like 
standing up all day, using your arms all day to move, to yeah. move. You have to be very, very strong um, to be yeah. able to cope um, with your body too. Is that, is that something that you've had um, to really work with uh, as a hairdresser to really cope with, um, you know, being able to stand up all day and um, move your arms and shoulders in a certain way all the time? Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. I probably, I, you know what, this is something that I am working on very hard right now is um, I guess the physicality of my job. So it's all well and good to be it, just standing on your feet, like you said, for, you know, 40 hours a week, it takes a toll. You need to be wearing the right shoes for one. You need to have a really strong core and back um, so that you can support your body. Um, and I think, you know, ongoing body training in terms of exercise and movement, um, and mobility is Um, but something that I'm learning as I get older is that if I'm not strong in my body and I don't have the correct posture or the correct alignment, then I'm going to end up, you know, with severe probably neck and shoulder in in injuries um, or RSI from, you know, repeating the same movements all the time but not in the correct posture. Um, you know, there's some really bad long-term health implications that can happen through hairdressing if you don't look after yourself. Um, you're always running kind of on a, on adrenaline as well when you're hairdressing. It's always a, um, you know, it's a, a fast-paced environment, so you're always on the go. So, you know, to be able to, you know, fuel your body properly and have the right nutrition to support your, um, I guess, adrenal glands and like that kind of adrenaline process that your body goes through on a daily basis as well as, you know, keeping your bones and muscles and body strong and healthy as well. You know, that's something long term that you need to do. It means that when you're, you know, 60 or 70, you're not going to be crippled from working in an industry, not looking after yourself. You're actually going to go into it being strong and fit and healthy and able and mobile until, you know, you're older because you've set up those stepping stones to be, um, yeah, strong and, you know, sustained in your profession. It's just not something that is taken that seriously within the industry. It comes to down to, I guess, a personal journey for a lot of people. But realistically, long term, it should probably be something that is incentivized within the industry and space so that you're looking after you and the future and your young people as well and teaching them, you know, good, strong behaviors to lead them into, I guess, a lasting career within the industry. Wow. So like, this is what really needs to be understood. Like, if you're going to create a long term success in any any sort of business, you need to have all of these abilities in place. A lot of the time, a lot of people just don't even consider what you're talking about. So imagine mm. if the industries actually came in and said, okay, this is what you need to do to look after your body. This is mm. what you need to do to actually make sure your client actually feels emotionally connected with your with what you do. This yeah. is what you need to do to make sure you are nutritionally serviced, to make mm. sure that you can do a really good job for that for your um, for your long term well being. This is how hairdressing needs to be educated, in my opinion, rather than just the tactics, right? So we're talking mm. about an evolution here, and a lot of a lot of the time we um, we we meet we meet we meet people, and then we meet Megan, right? And um, what, I, what I'm seeing here is a person who wants to change the face of the beauty industry, not just, um, not just hairdressing, the whole beauty industry in general. And we're looking at all the facets. And this is what I love. Like, I know um, I'm quite a bit older than you, uh, right. linearly, right? <laughs> I look and, I just, and I look and I just go, wow, um, to have someone so young, uh, with so much energy and so much want and desire to change the face of something that is a big mountain to climb, Meek. It's, mm. it's going to be one of those things where um, to, to handle backlash, to handle a different a person coming in to, to say, hey, we can do this differently, guys. 
you're going to have to be a really, really strong individual, Megan, to be able to stand up. And I know like right now we've got a really big picture about what you want to do, how you want to change the face of um, hairdressing. And I know that you can do it. Uh, how do you feel like, like how do you get support? Like what's the way that you can make sure that you're getting that right support um, on the journey of um, creating this uh, mammoth task um, that I'm seeing that you're actually wanting to create? Yeah, I mean, sometimes I think about it as a mammoth task as well. And I get, you know, quite overwhelmed by all of the steps and all of the things that I want to achieve through this task. Like, it's, you know, that I've got so much passion around it. And I feel a lot of the time super overwhelmed by it. I think for me, um, I guess there's so many things that I, I do to get support and that I do to... I guess, keep myself grounded and on track and not let myself get, you know, taken away by the overwhelm. Um, I think the Academy for me and joining such a great network of incredible people um, has been a huge, it's, it's been monumental in my life, actually. I've been, I guess, in the Academy now for about a year um but just the love and the support and the kindness and caring that I've received from I guess yourself and Anya and Philia and Laura um who work for UJ and I guess just every other academy member that you know I meet and speak to you know everyone gives me support I give them my support as well as much as I physically like as much as I possibly can but to know that I can you know, go and speak to someone and go, I'm struggling, you know, with my diet at the moment, or I'm struggling with um, my emotional maturity at the moment. Like how, you know, just being able to reach out and go like, this is where I'm not strong and this is where I'm struggling and get, you know, support and guidance in the meantime is huge. Like it's, it's changed my life and being able to meet so many people and be able to put like a team together around me that can really like, help me support myself to then grow and support others has been amazing but I think it comes down to for me like just being consistent with my self-care routine so I know that you know journaling and meditation um, is something that I definitely need to be really consistent with and really diligent with um, yeah. in terms of like my I guess my mental well-being um, I very much go into, you know, those mental thought loops and things like that. So to be able to have a process in place where I can disconnect from that or even just get what's in my head on paper and out of my brain is huge for me. Um, you know, physical well-being as well. So like, you know, I've got a dog, which is great. It really motivates me to actually physically move a little bit more than I do. So she goes for a walk, you know, three, four times a week, depending on, I guess, how my schedule aligns. Um, stretching and I guess yoga and Pilates is something that I love doing to keep, I guess, my, my body physically strong and my posture aligned. Um, and I think the biggest one that needs work at the moment, which um, I'm taking the steps to work on is um, nourishing myself um, with the right foods and, you know, fuel and stuff like that. So I think once I've got consistency and diligence in all three of those spaces, I think things will be a little bit more aligned. But, I mean, there's so many things you can do. It's different for everybody. It's not the same. Like what works for me might not work for somebody else. So it's really just finding, like, I guess your tailored program to take the steps to look after you first so that you can then give your all when looking after others. Yeah, I think this is really important, this is, is that quite often, um, you know, creating something that's unique, creating something that's new, you can feel quite alone, right? So, and quite often when you've got like what you're wanting to create, which is a, a whole new human design within an industry, right? Mm. So if you go into an industry saying, hey, I want to do this, the industry is probably going to say, well, no, that's not what we do, Megan, right? Mm. So, and it can be, it can feel quite isolating when you're um, with a group of people. I know, I know what that felt when I created the Academy because I was creating uniqueness mm. and um, you're, you do feel alone in those pictures. And it's really nice to have an environment where you don't feel that way because that's usually listeners is what 
actually stops people in their tracks and they don't create the life that they want without the support. And I think this is essential. Um, a person who does so much support, right, who provides so much support and care needs to make sure that they're actually receiving it. And if you don't, this is where we can all break down. Would you agree? A hundred percent. And I have had to learn what it means to have support and be supported um, in the right way. Like I've never really had, I guess, I've always felt like I've needed to go it alone and that I can't, you know, take anyone else along the journey or I can't reach out for support or I've never known really where to reach out for support or get what I need from people. So to be able to have, I guess, more awareness around, you know, what my needs are as a human being first um, and then be able to, to, you know, get the support I need in the right way so that they can come along the journey with me. They're not doing the journey. I'm doing the journey, but for them to come along beside me and go, hey, have you thought about this? Or, hey, are you focusing on this too much when you should be focusing, you know, here instead? And, you know, just people to bounce ideas off and just go, you, you know, you can do it. It's not, you know, you thinking to yourself, Jesus, I've got this big idea in my head that I want to create. I'm alone, all alone. I can't do it now, which is what I was like. And I used to be like before I joined the academy. Now I'm at a stage where it's like, I have all these people that love me and support me for who I am as a person. I can be vulnerable with them. I can get angry at them. No one takes it personally either. Like, you know, everyone's just there to support you where you are right now and to be able to, you know, pull in who I need when I need it to come along the journey with me and really like propel forward with confidence and I guess strength is, it's it's life-changing. Like you can't, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today without, you know, the journey that I've been on for, I guess my whole life is because your whole life's a journey, but, you know, really the last year where I've worked really hard and faced a lot of I guess inner demons, I've really started to push through them and I guess see change and see, I guess, more like strength and confidence in the story that I want to create and the change that I want to propel forward. Yeah, and I think this is really important, listeners, is that you, we quite often don't hear the journey, right? We don't hear the journey. We, we hide all the really difficult experiences i know you've melted down with me quite a few times and i've pulled you up pulled you up and got you got you moving got you motivated again we don't hear these parts of the creative process we only hear um here we are we started and we broke through we don't actually yeah. hear, we, and then right over over here somewhere we start saying this is what we had to do to get there but no one wants to tell you um or no one wants to anybody to know that it's hard bloody work and you go through all of this emotional turmoil and mental turmoil to get to a a place that you've never been before and we we don't want to talk about it we want to wait until the hero's journey is complete and listeners this is shit because Mm. what you end up doing is um as you said you've got support along the journey and i didn't i was dumb megan Mm. i was so dumb i I did the stupid way of just hiding it all, dealing it with all my all myself and trying to get somewhere with no voice to hear, no mm. ear to listen. And it was hard. And if I had yeah. my time back again, I wish I would have found um, something like um, you've, you've got now because it's, I just wish, and I'm so envious mm. of um, what I've created for the people who are in our academy because um, watching you guys flourish, knowing that you've got somewhere to melt down and knowing that you've got the support and the way to get forward because people don't understand like success um, comes at a massive cost if you don't work on yourself along the way because you yeah. end up heartless. And then you're yeah. wondering, why have I got this thing and I don't feel good inside still? Yeah. Right? Or you burn is, out along the way and then yeah. you just don't make it there anyway. Yeah, and that's the common, like, look, I'd say 1% to 10% of people actually make it successfully in business. Mm. And the reason is burnout, give up, no support, 
lack thereof. I'm one of the anomalies who's gotten through those barriers. Mm. Dumb decision listeners, don't do me, do Megan. Um, <sighs> make sure you get the support. It doesn't have to be us. It's just getting the support that's actually going to mm. help drive you when you're lacking in confidence. Um, and I think this is really important. Is there something that you could tell um, people, Megan, who are in the hairdressing industry, just one piece of advice from where you're going, like for somebody who wants to join the industry or is in the industry now, what could you tell them um, that could help them um, improve? I think, I mean, if, if I'm talking to someone that wants to join the industry, it, you need for me, it's like, why? Why do you want to join the industry? Like, what is it about it that draws you? If you just think that it's like a job that looks fabulous on paper, but you're not willing to put in the hard work, then maybe it's not the right industry for you because it's really hard work. But for me, it's about like, why? Why do you want to look after people? Why do you want to connect with people? Why do you want to do their hair? What is it about it that is drawing you to it? And how can you take hold of that and really turn it into your purpose for the industry? Like I just wanted a job that I could talk to people, that I could be creative in and that I could do something different every single day. That's what drew me to hairdressing because my day is never the same. I always get to talk to people and I'm always like I'm learning and creating all the time. So that for me, fantastic. the purpose is not hair. The purpose is and the reason behind doing hair is not hair. And I think if it's so, it's like I said at the beginning, it's, you know, it's such an intimate process to look after someone and be able to be in their bubble, like in their space energetically and to be able to physically, you know, touch them and stuff like that. It's a huge honour to do that, but you've got yeah. to make sure that you understand, I guess, the responsibility of being allowed and being given permission to be in that space for somebody else because I guess the, it, it's quite an intimate relationship in a way because yeah. they're being vulnerable, you've got to be vulnerable back and it's about, you know, openness and connectedness. But, you know, if you're going into it just, you know, without that openness, that vulnerability, that connectedness, then maybe it's not right for you. Maybe there's something that is better suited to, you know, I guess where you're going. Yeah, and I think this is important. What about for people like you've spoken so many things today about people who to create longevity in, in the well-being nature of a person who's in the industry and they may be a bit burnt out or, you know, they're struggling in some way. How would you, how, what would advice would you give them? Um. Well, I think when I've been in those instances, it's kind of been a time to, I guess, step back and really reflect and really, I guess, find something that fuels your fire within the industry. Well, like, you don't have to cut hair if you don't want to cut hair. If you don't want to colour hair, don't colour hair. If all you want to do is styling, go be a stylist. Like, really find and connect with, you know, what is it that you love about the industry? What fuels your fire? What gets you excited? What makes you go, oh, I've got an idea just from hearing that person talk or from watching that person, you know, color someone's hair or cut someone's hair or style it. Like really, I guess just, I guess in terms of like industry stuff, like really find out like where your, where your niche is, like what you're about, what you want to like put out there. Um, and, you know, just focus on that. Like, who cares if you're not doing everything? You don't have to do everything. I know people that just cut hair. They haven't coloured in years. They don't want to. I know people that just do bridal styling because they love looking after brides on their big day. So I think it's, it's what you want. It's not what other people want mm -hmm. out of the industry. Like, you might have an employer and they want you to cut colour and style. Great for your employer. But if it's not what you want, don't do it. Don't sacrifice yourself and your happiness for somebody else because it's not worth it. If you're not happy and you're not looking after yourself and you're not doing what you want to do, then it's never going to work. You're never going to have a long-term career in the industry because you're going to resent them at some stage because you never took the leap of faith 
to stand up for yourself and go, hey, this is what I want, this is what I need, and this is what I'm going to do and just go with it. I love this. So you're teaching, you're, you're basically t- telling people belong within yourself, belong within your industry and be the yeah. person that you're always meant to be. And if you have an employer that is like Megan that will come in and say, hey, um, what would you like to do? What's your passion? Then you get the great employer because that employer is actually getting you in your unique selling proposition for your mm. for the business for their business and that's that's the type of employer that i would want so megan look i am so uh in inspiration mode right now with you and and what you're doing and um i know you we've got some big goals to focus on um to get yourself number one in canberra for what you do and um and then number one as a spokesperson for what really matters. And this is, listeners, this is a touch on an understanding of um, a massive creator who wants to build, change the face of an industry um, and make it different and make it even more beautiful. So if you're in Canberra and you're wanting to get your hair done, um, we're going to put all the details of Megan in the show notes so you can find her and find out where she is and what she does and how she does it because uh, you're not only going to get loved up, you, you're going to get a person who actually has a whole lot of depth and a whole lot of want to love and care for you to help you become an inner beautician. Yeah. Embrace your own magic, people. If you don't do it, no one else will do it for you. So as hard as it is a journey to, you know, and it's a journey I'm still on, but as hard as it is to really embrace all of your gifts and all of your perfections and all of the things that make you you, it's time to just do it. Like what are we waiting for? You know, we've all got something unique and magical to bring to, I guess, the planet and the earth and the journey that we're all on together. So why are we hiding and why are we afraid? Realistically, we should be celebrating all of those perfections in each other and, you know, be there to support each other as much as we possibly can because, you know, love and support for yourself breeds love and support for others. And I think the world needs a little bit more love, kindness, caring and support right now. It's a tough time out there. And I think if we can all band together and create a world where, you know, women feel confident and strong and beautiful, I think the world would be a better place. A hundred percent. And I put a post out just on the weekend about women, just saying women, are, I'm, I'm imploring every woman who um, listens to this podcast, please, whatever it is that you're wanting to do, please stand out and don't hold back right now. We need women leading because there's a different, there's a difference between males and females in leadership. And I'm just going to put it straight out there. Women care more. I'm just going to be, and I'm a man, right? You have a natural baseline of care because you're, um, that's the feminine, that's the feminine energy that comes along, a natural baseline of care. So if you're sitting in a a true woman um, caring and having that caring nature, this planet's going to change because you're going to lead not because you're going to sit there and hold back. And this is what I love about you, Megan. You want to lead. You don't want to hold back. You want to um, drown every be- every breath of your life into your world. So then instead of drowning, you start floating, right? And sometimes we feel like we're drowning in our emotions and the care that you provide and the want and desire as a woman to lead on this planet is so essential right now. And this is a big call out for women to stand up And be long. Don't fit in. Be the person you're always meant to be and start believing in yourself. And Megan, I really appreciate um, having the opportunity to have an amazing woman uh, to talk to on Uncovered. I'm really uh, grateful that I've got the chance and I'm hoping listeners, for you guys who are listening to this today, if you found this really inspirational, I'd love it if you could like or share Megan's podcast here and the Uncovered podcast because we're trying to uncover the greatness in people, the ability for people to make an impact on this world 
So this world becomes a better place. And I love the fact that, Megan, you on this planet, you're wanting to do stuff. You're wanting to make, make a difference in this world. You're wanting to impact change. And you're an amazing, amazing woman, amazing hairdresser, an amazing beautician of the inner self. So thank you for jumping on and cover today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's been so good to, I guess, talk about and express, you know, what beauty and the industry really means to me and what, you know, my purpose is here to help create and change in the world. Thanks so much for listening to our podcast. We really appreciate you and we really appreciate your time because time is so valuable. What we'd love you guys to do, if you like this podcast, if you could share it with your friends um, and also our website address for the podcast is www.wellnessbreaktoacademypodcast.com our website is www.wellnessbreaktoacademy.com we have a free facebook group called wellness leadership evolution so search for that i'd love it if you could add me as a friend on facebook i don't buy it so um, add me as a friend and um, if you want some help and you would really like some support from us in the academy, jump in. Um, we have a process. You can do a breaking call to connect in with us. We do small courses. Uh, we have lots of things that we share. So we'd love the opportunity to give you a chance to change your life and turn it into a free one. You are one transformation away from change. Come and catch up.